Today I have three new rustic Christmas DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. All right, the first is going to be a rustic curly wreath. We're going to start off with some of these pipe cleaners. Use whatever color you like. I'm going to use some of this decorative mesh that came from Dollar Tree. It will take me four and a half rolls. And this is a 14 inch wreath form from Dollar Tree. You can see that it is broken down into sections and that is going to be important in a moment. All right, we're going to start rolling this off and cutting it out in 12 inch pieces. We're going to make bundles of three and we are going to need 18 bundles of three. So you're going to just roll it under here. The tighter you roll it, the smaller your curls are going to be. I like mine to be about the diameter of a nickel when you look at the end of it, but do whatever it is that you like. And we're going to just stack those together. One more, you can see what I'm doing here, and stack it. If you have a bunch of clamps or those little clothes pins, those work really well to hold your little pieces together. We're going to take a coordinating ribbon. This one came from Dollar Tree. And then I have two more that came from the thrift store. We're going to have nine of each one of these. So nine of the plaid, nine of the one with the holly, and nine of the little, the thinner brown ribbon here, or beige ribbon. All of these are wired, and you do want to use wired ribbon for this. To give it a finished look, you want to fold those over and cut a little line up to make V's. These are called dovetails. This gives a very nice look, just like that. We're going to take pipe cleaners, and I did switch to the red and white. You're going to need 18 of those. This is how we're going to attach our little bundles down to the wire wreath. I'm going to use a zip, I'm going to use a tie here. Put it around, twist it so that it stays on the wreath, just like this. We're going to use three in each section, and you can see those dividers. And you're just going to use three on each one. You can see they're about evenly spaced, just like this. Okay, so now we're going to start placing down those bundles. You're going to grab that bundle, take your clamp off of it, and the side that has the little the edge that sometimes comes unraveled with the Dollar Tree mesh, place that downward against the wreath so that you won't notice and all of your pretty sides will be up. Just like this. Put your next one down, press it down into there, hold it tightly and twist it. So there's two bundles. You can just push those little twists out of the way if you'd like. And then continue all the way around your wreath. Then you can fluff out a little bit. Make sure everything is where it should be. And look how full that is. If you prefer, you can make it even more full by doing four bundles of four instead of three. All right, so we're going to start with our little stacks of ribbon. They're all nicely dovetailed and ready to go. You're going to open one of your little pieces down here. And you're going to twist this in just like this. One or two twists, you don't need a whole lot to hold it in place. And then you're just going to bend and fold these out. This is part of the fluffing process. It makes everything nice and neat. Don't worry about the wires not being the right color. Don't worry about the that sort of thing. We're going to take care of that shortly. I'm going to show you again. Take that stack, kind of pinch it together in the middle. Fix the ribbons how you want them. And then we're going to skip. So we're going to go to the third one. So we had one, we skipped one, and now we're in the next one. So there are 18 bundles on your wreath, and you are going to use nine of the little ribbon stacks in the wreath, every other pipe cleaner. Just like that. Here we go again. We're going to stack them together. Skip one and go to that one. Now we're going to go all the way around just like that. This is easy enough to do, right? 
and it makes such a pretty presentation. All of these little tails sticking out, so pretty. If you're enjoying this content, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Okay, so we wanna make everything look pretty. And now we have all these leftover pipe cleaners. So what are we gonna do with those leftover pipe cleaners? If you're not gonna add anything else to it and you're finished, you're gonna take it to the back and twist it around and or cut it off. If you wanna show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Just look in the description box below. And thank you very much to Ms. Brenda Holmes for buying me my coffee. Okay. Press through your wreath form here and just twist it. And then you can just lay it down like that or cut it off. So when you're all done, this is what you're left with and you can't even see those anymore, right? Fluff everything out, touch every little piece of that ribbon, put it in the right place, make sure none of your wreath form is showing underneath and that none of your hardware shows. You don't want any of your little ties showing underneath there. And you can fluff them up so that they won't be seen and it looks more high-end that way and this is how it looks so far really pretty and actually pretty enough on its own you wouldn't have to add anything but you could put a sign there if you wanted to maybe in the middle we're gonna add a big pretty bow I'm gonna use this bow make bow making tool that I made for myself I'll link that video for you and you're just going to measure off long tails and we're going to have varying tails on the different bows this is going to be a stacked bow really easy bow to make um, you're just going to keep repeating the same process over and over again with the bows getting a little bit smaller as you get toward the top so we're going to take this ribbon put it on the bottom and make sure that we have a nice big loop to start with and pull our tails down and out of the way i'm going to fold it over push my two wires together and slide it down in there. Just like that. That's just the way I do it. You don't have to put your wired pieces together. You can just shove the whole thing in there if you want, but this is how I do it. Makes more sense to me. We're gonna do a good long tail on this one too. So we're gonna place it down in there. I'm going to twist it so that I have the shiny side up pinch my wires together and slide it right through that slot and I want this bow to be about a half an inch shorter than the bow that is underneath it I'm gonna twist it just like that hold it down the bow makers that you can buy already made have a little spool on the end like a little extra knob down there that you can put your ribbon spool on which makes it very convenient that you don't have your ribbon just running amok on your table um, I didn't add that onto mine, and I kind of wish I would have, but you know, that's, that's for another video. Anyway, we're going to continue along stacking this bow, each little layer with each little parts of the loops being a little smaller than the one that is underneath it. So it's just like steps. The bottom's going to be the longest, and then a little bit shorter, and a little bit shorter, and a little bit shorter as we go up and stack up on our bow. Just like this. I was down to the end of this ribbon, so I had to pull on it a little bit and kind of adjust it so I had some even tails. Keep going here. That's my struggle to see which side is which. All right, so now we already have our zip tie underneath, so that makes it easy for us to wrap around it and zip it off. You can use floor wire for this. You can use another pipe cleaner if you wanna use it. I should have put a piece of wire under there between the zip tie and the bow in the back so that we would have something to attach to the wreath, but I do something else instead and you can choose which way you wanna do it. So before I get it completely tight, I'm making sure that my little loops are even and then I can tighten up that zip tie. Finish off your ends with dovetails. This is gonna make them look very nice. Here is my piece that I'm going to use to hang it to the wreath, and I'm just going to use a piece of jute. Wrap it around the back and give it a couple of knots and cut off that extra piece there. We don't need that. Just like that. 
and then here's our wreath we can go ahead and choose what we want the top to be it all looks the same and then we're going to wrap it around back and tie it if you're going to give this to anybody be sure that you really cover up your little uh, wires and things in the back but this is just for me and it won't be on a glass door so it won't be a problem all right and here i am just fluffing those loops up and out and you know we want it to look nice we don't want it to look like we just pulled it out of a box of our decorations from last year i want to give you a couple of options now for what you can do with your bow i've got these all pulled out here and they are kind of looped and hanging over the sides and they look really gorgeous you could leave them just like this long if you would like or you could trim them up if you would like or you can curl them like i did we're going to use a spool that our deco mesh came off of because I save everything. And you can really tell if you look in my craft room. Watch my lighting video if you want to see what my craft room looks like. Because I show it without cleaning it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all my secrets are out now. Just going to curl it, wrap it around. Doesn't matter which direction you do. You see I switched it up last minute. Doesn't matter. Just as like we're curling someone's hair, you're going to make these little curly cues all over do some to the left some to the right pull them down if they get squished they have wire you can just roll it back out it's not permanent but it'll last as long as you leave it alone mine is hanging up in my staging area and it's still gorgeous no problem at all just going to continue around like this. I want you to see all this so that you get the idea that everything needs to be touched. Everything needs to be manipulated. We really want this to look high end. And you can see the difference when you're done with your projects. I don't want somebody to come in my house and say, look what you crafted. No, no. If they don't know that I'm a crafter, I just want them to look at it and, and assume that I got it from a high end store somewhere. Maybe at Kirkland's or, you know something like that dare I say pottery barn hmm I don't know would you consider this rustic because I do I do because of the colors and because of the print of the holly on that ribbon I think it looks woody or woodsy so I think that it fits and I think the colors fit too for rustic and it certainly will fit in my home so look how pretty this is look at those curls love it and the best thing is you don't have to use hairspray how about that save that for the glitter that is the biggest bow i have ever done in my life look at that i'm just going around playing with the ribbon to make sure i have a variety on both sides number two is our rustic pine wheelbarrow you're going to need some foam floral foam and some type of a container i have a wheelbarrow but you can use a truck or you can use a wagon whatever you want to use this is wood and it's gorgeous. These are some picks that came from Goodwill. This is a little sign that came from Goodwill. These are my scraps of ribbon that I had left over. And then this is a pick that I already had. It's just a little, it, it could even be a piece of incense. I don't know what it is. I get so much stuff, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna use some hot glue and just put this down in the base because I don't want my pine branches to fall out. I don't wanna just lay them in. We want it to look like we've been in the woods and we're getting ready to decorate our porch. So here we go. We're gonna take this longest piece, put it on the bottom. Now they are originally all the same length, but we are going to adjust that. Okay, got the first one in. We're gonna cut this one about an inch up and it's gonna go on top and at an angle right here. Okay, and then the last one of the third piece I'm just gonna bend a little bit and about an inch and a half up we're gonna cut that one and clip that off give it a little bend and put that right in the front of that foam and it goes in kind of at an angle remember that pine branches are basically straight so make sure that when you're fluffing your pine you get it straight be sure that you're covering up your foam so that you get a nice look you can use excelsior grass you can use moss you can use paper shreds whatever it is that you have i don't want anything showing underneath 
So I'll make this nice and neat and do the best I can with what I've got. And this is some I already had from another project. Okay, so that looks nice, right? All right. Now, we want to put this sign in there. It's so good to be home. We're going to put a little hot glue there and the pick on it. And then please use white. I just used this because it's the only thing I had in my reach right now. So that's what I used. But you want to use white so that it looks nice from both sides. We're going to use scraps of ribbon. And I'm using the smallest piece of ribbon I had left of that plaid there or that checked piece and I'm just measuring everything against that so that I can use the piece. I'm going to use a couple of pieces of the beige and I'm going to use a couple of pieces of my holly ribbon. Okay so we're just going to dovetail same thing as before and I'm just showing you that you can do more than one layer at a time if you would like to save a little time. For this messy bow you're just going to start putting down your layers just like this. And put your next layer on and then one on top. I'm going to cut a little piece of this jute so that I can accordion this or walk those thumbs together like this. Wrap that jute around it, lay it down, and give it a few knots. You want to be sure you tie your knot really tight because you're going to need to fluff and manipulate this bow quite a bit. Okay. So you just pull apart your little layers, pull them down and pull them up and out. You separate them and they'll look nice like this. So we're gonna put our sign down in our container. When we were little, we called them wheelbarrows, not burrows, wheelbarrows. Go get the wheelbarrow, and we'd ride around and push each other in them. But that's not what this is. It's a wheel. It's a wheelbarrow. Okay, because I know somebody will correct that if I say it wrong. We're going to tie this on here, just like so. And it is a little crooked, but a little hot glue will fix that. And you can put it exactly where you want it, and then make sure that everything looks beautiful on your little bow. Nice. I like this. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Number three is our rustic nativity. All right, so I got a stack of these from Goodwill, and I'm just going to be using one of these as our background today. It is five and a half inches. You use what you have. I've got a couple of stars to choose from and this 3D kit. I've chosen to use the nativity, but you can certainly use the snowman or the woods if this is not something that interests you. This is a cherry paint marker or a furniture repair marker and a little bit of spray paint. This is in like a black, almost black. So I'm going to spray paint the ornament part and put it out to dry. And then we're going to use this furniture repair marker to stain our gorgeous little nativity. I'm going to go all around in this darker color. And then when we get to baby Jesus, we're going to do something just a little bit different for him. So we got the wise men and Joseph and the bottom of this manger is going to be the dark color. And then I'm going to choose the oak marker, which is a little bit lighter and put it on the top part. And that's where little baby Jesus is asleep. So you can use brown paint if you don't have a furniture marker. I'm just showing you, be sure you color in all your little white spots so that nothing shows. We're going to take a star, whichever star you choose, if it is a galvanized star. And mine came off of a 4th of July sign from Dollar Tree so I'm reusing that. Just take a little bit of the antique wax and to keep it in the rustic theme we're just going to dull it down a little bit and give it a little bit of age. Simple enough. It took very little of that stain to make that work and you're going to let it dry. So here are our pieces all ready to be worked with. I'm going to take my sanding block and those come from Dollar Tree. They're really, really good. I do recommend them. They're in two different grits or two different grains. Just like that. Now we have our little edges knocked off. Gives it a little more of a rustic look. I have some E6000 and the container is like a little jewelry container, but I believe it's made of the same thing. It works the same way, but it has a tiny little hole. So it's really easy to work with on small projects like this. I'm going to use a little hot glue for a quick hold until the other glue has a chance to set up. 
and I'm going to press it down get it in the right spot and then give it a chance to set up and once the glue is dry carefully slide the pieces in I know I want the manger to be in the background and then I'm gonna put the wise men in there then I'll add in Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus and then they're not glued in so they can easily be moved around but they do stay in place fairly well at least on the particular one I have now we're gonna add our star a little hot glue will work for this but you can certainly use a little bit of E6000 or whatever type of adhesive that you want to use that works for you and then put that down right on top of where the other star was on the manger all right so if you just like simple modern this might be the thing for you and you might be complete but I want to add a little bit more so I'm just taking some of this ribbon that I got I believe either from Walmart or Dollar General last year on clearance and we're just going to place that down kind of as a little border or edge covering you know where that wood was showing the layers were showing and then I'm going to wrap it around and neatly trim it and glue it down to hang this to make it a large Christmas tree ornament or I guess medium medium large large for my tree we'll put it that way we're gonna make a little bow on here and a hanger so the first part we're gonna do is the bow and it's just we're looping it over so that we have two pieces on one end two pieces on the other end just like this Again, trim it off then we're gonna cut another little piece and we're gonna use it to tie around the middle to make the tails you can do a shoestring bow, shoelace bow, whatever you call it, any way that you want to do it. You can just flip those around and fluff the little ears out, and you'll have two loops on each side. Some jute would be really pretty here also, if you like. A little bit of hot glue is going to hold this in place right underneath the little shelf. And then we need to trim up the tails. And if you need to glue your little bow down you can certainly do that on the little loopy part so to make a tie or hanger we're going to just take another piece of that ribbon tie one knot in the end and then you can just easily put that on the back with a little bit of hot glue right behind where the top of the ornament would be look just like that and that's how that would look so I want to show you these backdrops. This is called La Forest Backdrop. They got in touch with me and asked me did I want to try out some of their items and show them in a video. And these are great. Um, it looks like it is not in focus, but it's the way it is supposed to look. I want to show you how it looks laying here. They come very neatly packaged. And then I used a little bit of steam to iron it out because it does have some creases in it from the folds. You can see that. And then, it, there it is hanging in the background. Is that not gorgeous? I love that. I love it. I could not wait for these to come in. That looks just like a piece of my house. It looks so realistic. Here are the pieces. On my lovely little newly made up Christmas backdrop for you guys. Is our little greenery piece down below. And then here we have that beautiful curly wreath. Which of these is your favorite? And which one do you think that you will be trying? I'd love to know. I hope you've enjoyed these as much as I have. Thank you so much for stopping by. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Bye.